Hi guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to actually do something that I wish I would have had when I set this up. We are going to check out my Nectar Impact LX49 Plus and see how you set it up with Pro Tools. Because I've used it with Reaper, I've used it with Pro Tools, I've used it with Ableton, and Pro Tools is by far one of the worst setup procedures I've ever had. And Nectar's website is a little helpful, but it doesn't walk you through some of the things that you're gonna see that I had a little bit of trouble with. And we'll also go over the functions of it after we kind of walk through the little bit of a setup that there is to deal with it, to work, make it work for Pro Tools and making all of this work with the system itself. So let's get into that. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer that way I can focus on the computer and the keyboard itself, and we will start talking about it. Okay guys, so the first thing you're gonna have to do, if you do buy the Nectar series of keyboards, and it's pretty much any of them from the LX25 all the way up to the 88 key, you're gonna have to go to Nectar's website at nectartech.com and find the Pro Tools setup and troubleshooting uh, section which you can do a simple Google shirt search it comes up real quick that way and you're gonna have to download these templates depending on which one you have I have the LX 49 so obviously I, I would download the, the LX 49 template and then you're gonna have to download either Sysix librarian for Mac OS X or you're gonna have to download send SX for Windows and that's to transfer that that template to the actual keyboard itself. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier if you do that first instead of trying to figure it out later. Now after you download that you're going to go in and you're going to open the, the SendSX. Obviously I'm on a Windows computer so I'm using the Bone software of SendFX, SendSX and you're going to go up here and you're going to figure you're going to click your MIDI in and out which is going to be the 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 impact LX49 so now on MIDI in if you can see this it's going to automatically choose the impact LX49 right there you're going to want to choose the MIDI 2 otherwise this is not it's going to not work the way you want it to it's going to be real buggy and it's good, the, the controls aren't going to match what everything does so make sure you change that to MIDI 2. That way it's right. Um, and then what you would do is you'd go find your file, you're gonna open it. It's gonna be that, that template, and more than likely it's gonna be in downloads, and it's gonna be here. It will show up as a, as a uh, zipped file, so make sure you unzip the file before you try to import it into SendSX or, or the Mac OS X version of this. And you open it and you go and you click here. And that's going to put it here to get it ready to send into the keyboard itself, the MIDI keyboard. Now I've already done this. All you would do is you would hit F4 or you would just hit send down here, right there. And then that will push the data into this side and make it where you want it to. Now after you're done with that, you're going to close all that. What I like to do is I like to turn the actual keyboard itself on and off. And then you're going to have to go to the keyboard side of things. So we'll close all this out. Okay, guys, the last part of this whole setup, you're going to have to go to the keyboard. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit shift, mute, and then patch together. And that's going to say, it's going to end up saying set up here on, on the actual MIDI controller itself on the display. And you're going to hit the 13th white key from the first one. And that's going to be right next to low power. So the way I remember it is if you see the low power one over the black key, it's the white key right next to it. That's going to come up with 000. zero, zero. What you're going to want to do is there's a minus. It's the 15th key. So it's the 15th key white key there's going to be a minus just tap it one time it should say zero zero three that's where you want it for pro tools then just hit shift mute and patch again and it'll go back to normal that's the setup on the keyboard 
Okay, so we have Pro Tools open, and now what you're going to do is you're going to go to Setup up here at the top. You're going to go to Peripherals, and then it's going to say MIDI Controllers here on the third tab. I'm sure if you guys have used Pro Tools before, you know where to find it if you've used a different keyboard. So this is going to show up as your type. It's going to be under M Audio Keyboard, as you can see right there. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. There you go. It's going to show up as an M Audio keyboard. Click that, and then it's going to come up like this. And you're going to say Predefine. You're going to use MIDI N2 LX, the Impact LX49 Plus, or 88, or 25, whatever key, whichever one you have for your MIDI controller. And then on the, the Send 2, it's going to be the LX49 Plus emulated, or 88 Plus emulated, whichever one. And then you're just going to hit OK on that down here. And that's going to save the settings for Pro Tools. Now we finally get into the fun part. So now that you have it all set up, these three buttons where it says Mixer, Instrument, and Preset, these are all going to control what you want finally. So if you're on Mixer, like I am right now, all these here control your Mixer faders. So you can do your master, your first, all the way to your master track over here and fade them in and out. And I will show you on the computer over here. You can also control your, this will control which track is selected so that you can choose if you want to go in and arm it or play it or fast forward, reverse, or repeat that one track. So you have all this right here you can just pick the track with these buttons, whichever track you want. And then if you go to instrument, let's say you have up like uh, expand to when you're using this as a piano, you can control your attack, your decay, sustain, and everything from these. And you also have like if you're using uh, like a synth pad, you have your oscillation and your LFO and all that stuff over here for your mod so that you can control it here. Now the keyboard does have, let me slide it over a little, over here, if you're using stuff for like your, your keyboard or you have a trem verb or something like that, these will control that. So you can control your tremolo or your pitch right here with the, with the wheels and this one's a pop back so it automatically goes back to normal. And you can change your octave up, down and transpose the key from this whole board. Now, as long as you have it set up right in Pro Tools, everything should work the way it's supposed to. And we'll zoom over to the computer and we'll, I'll get some shots of that doing what it's actually supposed to do. Because I have a track pulled up right now that I've, I've been working on. We'll see if we can just fade in and out some things and see how it works. So let's see if I can get an angle on it. So here's my track open in Pro Tools. And now we're just going to... We're going to use the keyboard to control the actual track. So I'm, as you can see, my hands, they will be over on the keyboard. Um, they won't actually be on the key, the touching the keypad. So I can hit play and it'll play the track. Turn that up for you. And then what we can do is we can take the fader. Let's see our master here. Adjust the master fader up it down you want to cut it off and do that and then our first track here and since it's my master that's my first track the second one here we can cut down my electric guitar here fade him out full functionality of the whole track right in front of you so you don't always have to try to mouse click over here and pull this fader up and down you can just do it like if I want to drop the, the volume on the acoustic guitar track bring in more of the echoey part so it works beautifully when it's set up right so that, that's pretty cool. So we can actually do everything now. So we don't like that, we want to add a little. So that 
that's how that all works there. And then we can stop it. We can just go stop and it stops. So everything works the way it should on that for as far as your mixer controls go and everything else that way. So that's that's how you want it. All right, guys, so let's, let's say you're doing a piano track now. You got your, you got your, your, whatever you use, and I use Expand 2 always. I really enjoy it. Um, comes with Pro Tools, and it's fantastic. But let's say you want to adjust your, I don't know, let's, let's adjust the decay out here on the, on the keyboard. So we'll just, we'll just take our little faders. You can see I'm not... You can see I'm not touching the mouse. The mouse is actually, we'll put the mouse like right over here where you can see it, see the mouse? And then we'll, we'll adjust everything out. Oh, let's, let's get a little, let's get a little more, let's get a little more uh, hall echo on there. We'll, beautifully yeah I have no issues with it now that it's set up right and you can always let's say you're you're not loud enough but you like where your setting is you can always pop back to the mixer side adjust your volume back out like so give your master a little creep Sounds beautiful. So that's pretty much how to set up this and make this all work with Pro Tools. Okay guys, so I've used this same keyboard with Reaper, uh, Ableton, uh, GarageBand, um, Pro Tools obviously, um, and a couple others. And Pro Tools is the only one that you're gonna have this kind of problem with. It's, it's the only one that takes this much setup work. Now, if you use Reaper, it's just as, Reaper's easy. You just go in and you set what your MIDI controls are and it's done. It just works. Same with Ableton, same with Logic, pretty much everything else. Pro Tools, for some reason, is the pickiest program on the planet. So you have to do lots of crap to make anything work unless it's one huge mainstream brand. Um, as far as functionality goes on this Nectar Impact, I've, it works flawlessly all the time. You turn it on, it does what it's supposed to do. It's comfortable. They are semi-weighted keys. I know that will turn some people off of it, but to me, it doesn't affect anything. It feels fine. Um, I'm not a huge piano player, obviously. I'm not too good. I like to have it for my mixer controls, and I love to have it just to add and have around to play. So if it's something you're looking for, check them out. They're great little pianos. You can find them on Amazon. I think this one right now, it's like $249 for the 49 key. My goal sooner or later is to have an 88 key. They're about $500, $600. Um, but that would give you full functionality and a full piano. Anyway, if you're not looking for that, this one's great. You get all the functionality. You get eight little beat pads up top that you can see that were lit up green. You get all the controls that I could app possibly want out of it. And it's worked pretty well with everything. And after it's set up, it works well with Pro Tools with no issues. So guys, I hope that helps some of you. Because I know this thing for me was a complete pain in the butt to set up without trying to do a million Google searches and figure out why it wasn't working right. Especially when it came to which one to set the the file transfer for the template for Pro Tools in that send F S F or send FX or send SX, it was a real big nightmare. It was like, did I send it right? No, because it's obviously not working right. So I had to do it again and again and again until I figured it out. Now, 
If you guys have questions, make sure you ask. Leave me a comment down below. Ask your questions. I'm here to help. I can pull mine out and figure it out for you. It's not a big deal to me. I, I like doing this. So ask your questions. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for me. It helps me out a lot. The channel's been growing pretty well. We're up to 40 subscribers in 26 days. And with my shorts videos, I'm doing a lot of those now too. I've had people ask me to do, you know, uh, little tutorial videos on how to play the intros to a song and if you have one you want to hear leave it down in the comments I'll make a little short video on how to play it if I know how to or I'll figure it out and I'll do it anyway I'm here for you guys I want your comments and I need your likes and I need your you to subscribe to the channel please subscribe hey like I said before when we hit a thousand subscribers i'm going to give away a guitar i'm not telling anybody which one it is yet until we get closer when we hit that mm, i don't know, 500 subscriber mark i'll let everybody know what guitar it's going to be and we will go from there but hit the like and subscribe button guys thank you for watching the video please leave me your comments and i'll see you on the next one